Okay, we're starting again, and we're going to make this happen. Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I'm your host, Nelson. Okay, a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're going to get through this. Hopefully it's not laggy. Uh, double check some of the settings, but we're going to get through this. So here we go. Uh, this week's topic is, is web design dead or does it just suck now? You know? And so... Uh, let's see here. Let me get the new chat room up before I get into that because I love you. I love the community and I love talking to you guys. So let me pause that. Let me move the, let me move, let's see here. Pop out chat. Let me get that URL and it's gone. Stream has gone for me. I, I've moved. The stream is here. Okay, this one's smooth, buttery smooth, hopefully. I think this is how we're going to do it. Um, man, YouTube, what's going on? Maybe this was the reason. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much uh, for bearing with all the technical difficulties and uh, moving to this stream. Uh, yeah, so everyone in the chat room, thank you so much. Anna, Ba, Riley, Nita, Malart. Um, I, I know there's more like Nav and whatnot in the other chat room. Uh, sir. Yeah, so thank you guys. Uh, Dennis Lab, no problem. No problem. Uh, yeah, so the topic. If you see in the screen on my left, the main screen, you notice that most websites are starting to look uh, more and more the same. Or you have like a background video or um, or a hero row that's like full height, full width of the hero row. And then you have the logo or some sort of uh, clever copy and then call to action button. And everything starts to look the same. And uh, I went to the design and content conference up in Vancouver recently with the Webflow team. And we noticed that a couple of designers and content strategists also touched on this in their presentations. You know, um, this slide here is from uh, one of the uh, from one of the talks. And it's, you know, everything is starting to look boring, kind of like kind of like this, you know. And so. Uh, what made me want to talk about this more is because I saw this tweet over the weekend by Andy Clark. Um, he's, let's see here, if I go to, let me scroll all the way up. So just to read it, he's an art director at the UK, um, at UK uh, for Stuff Nonsense. He's also a podcaster and an author. And so I'm not sure how I saw it, probably retweeted by one of the people I'm following. But let me scroll down. Here we go. Uh, watched a couple of documentaries about punk. I think web design is in a boring phase and needs something to shake it up. Punk was all about experimentation. What do we have now? Oh, can't do that. Our users won't like it. It's not responsive. It's too slow. Uh, and lastly, today's web design is the epitome of conservatism. Too afraid to walk the boat. Too scared to stick its neck out or express an opinion. Now, I really love web design. I mean, it's been my passion, it's been my hobby for over 15 years. I've been doing web design since I was 13. And I always felt that it was like Legos, okay? I love Legos, I still play with them as you can see here on the shelf. Um, if you think about it, web design, you have all these new Lego pieces coming out every day, whether it be a new uh, JavaScript framework or a new design trend or new tool to use. There's all these pieces on the floor scattered, and it's up to you as a designer, as a builder, to figure out which piece fits where and make something new. Sometimes you want to go by the book. And then other times you want to just use your imagination and do something completely crazy. But nowadays we have these sites that are starting to look all the same. Whereas what happened to all the experimentation? 
but it makes sense why a lot of websites are the same and if anyone has any um you know experience in uh this topic let me know in the chat room you know let's talk about it um so there's two sides there's using traditional safe templated layouts and then there's the other side where you can create something super unique okay and let's just sh let me just show you some examples of traditional stuff okay so here's traditional okay we've all seen these kinds it's usually like um here a row and then three columns for the second row and it's just get boring and boring and boring okay and then you have stuff like this let me pull some up uh here we go this one is we are soak.com okay this is the hero row okay and then we scroll down and then it's it's different it's it's you know it's different and then we scroll here and then okay so things are happening on this site we are soak.com thing a lot of things are happening that's the hover state this is pretty cool okay yeah and then yeah cool this is all good and everything but here's the thing with this if I'm a regular web user who doesn't understand websites and why websites are deviating from traditional things like the hamburger menu button, I wouldn't know that the top left, see the top left with the logo? I wouldn't have known that that's actually the menu button unless I hover over it. See, each dot is one of the menu things. So they're experimenting, that's great. But I wouldn't know some of the simple things about web that have already been uh, thought of, you know, by all the UX people before us, okay? Like, I'm trying to hit that website because I think it's a button, but, you know, it's not a button. But then again, this whole thing is clickable, so that's good. So yeah, they're doing something creative, but it's kind of going it's kind of going too far but is that a bad thing and so there's always these two sides all right in the chat room it says um Lart says there's a lot of truth to this it's kind of hard to deviate without being called out by the d design community in my honest opinion that is true i I've, <laughs> I've submitted uh my uh iron man-ish type of portfolio site to designer news and people shot it down so hard you know and you feel bad but you're trying to experiment uh, Luke says, in my opinion, it's mostly budget. A lot of SMEs, uh, I'm not sure what SME stands for. In the UK, let's see here, define SME. Uh, small to mid-size enterprises, okay. In the UK that I deal with, simply either can't afford or don't want to pay for a custom exciting website each time. Uh, this speeds up the process and means costs less for the client. The result is good, but boring site a lot of the time. I guess the, Madeline says, I guess it depends on your audience. They can experiment. They want to impress. Okay. Cool discussion. We're totally agree with you guys. And so here's the, let me show you one more, uh, creative layout. Let me get one. How about this one? This one. Ah, okay. So this one has a loading bar from top to bottom. This one, you know where the menu button is because people read in an F formation on a website. They start from the top left and they scan to the right, go back to the top left, scan down and go to the right and so forth. And so I know that the menu button is here. And plus, people are so used to the menu button being three lines. So we are already there. So I mean, this is creative, but still uses traditional UX methods. This one scrolls down, has parallax scrolling, a lot of great content right here. And then we have an auto-playing video. Meat. <laughs> and then um, 
even more parallaxing happening. Keep it going, keep it going. And this form is different. Um, not sure if everything needs to be a drop down, but it is. It's really, really well done. Yeah, get it? Well done and meet. Uh, I just made a pun. All right. So yeah, it's creative, but it still has some traditional aspects to it. Okay. And let me close this one. <laughs> All right. And so, oh, more comments in the chat room. Luke says. Or Anita says, I think most clients are afraid of changing and being different. Luke says, I also think it comes down to UX research. Again, this isn't an area a lot of clients I've dealt with want to invest in. They want a site that they believe promotes their service product without, without ever really asking what the client wants for their website. Okay. Agreed. Uh, let's see here. So let's talk about the two sides. Um, everyone, uh, Luke is saying a lot of great things that um, that the client doesn't really want to pay for UX research, or they just want to get their product out there and say, "Hey, this is our website. We have one. Please buy." Okay. So let's let's summarize the pros of using a traditional safe layout. Okay. Uh, great fast turnaround for projects. Okay. So you can just buy a template change everything and you're done cool um not much need for coding because the coding is done for you you the layout's done for you you don't have to do much fast turnaround awesome the ux is already tested uh whoever made the template probably have used traditional uh ux methods like the hamburger button and hero row three column lay um three column layout for the second row and so forth making it look um look boring but I mean, for speed and cost efficiency, yes, that works. And another pro is anyone can start from a template and go really fast with it. But here are the cons for it. Every site starts to look the same. We've already, uh, I've already mentioned that. Designers may feel, s so if you're a designer, you may feel like you're stuck in a box. For example, you're in a template and you're like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if did this did this? And if that adds more hours to your workload, then it costs more money. And so of course the client may be kind of standoffish, be like, nah, don't do that, stick to stick to the guidelines stick to the template don't deviate right and so as a designer it might make you feel stuck um also when you make a site that's templated your brand does not stand out from the rest of the crowd i mean the company's brand doesn't stand out from the crowd you don't the, the brand doesn't feel unique okay and lastly the most important, the most important is there's no room for content strategy to help with the design, with the art direction of the site. If you start with a template, the art direction is already made for you. Content strategy is super important if you want to make something stand out. Okay, uh, let's see here. Riley says, I totally agree with Nita. I've seen that so much in design processes. Nita says, my last client just wanted a website almost equal to its competitors. Yes, that happens a lot. Um, actually, dang, I got to pull that up. I, so there's this book. And so let me, I'm deviating from my notes right now. But this actually... So here we go. Let me let me read this to you guys. Um, so this is from a book called uh, Web Design for ROI or Return on Investment. Uh, let's see. Let me bring this up. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, here we go. So there's probably some companies that are like, 
we need to see pictures of ducks on the homepage because our CEO loves ducks. Or did you see the competition change their homepage? We need to do the same exact thing as them. Or we need to leverage SEO. Uh, we need to use uh, SEO, leverage SEO and um, social media because that's what everyone else is doing. And doing new types of UX that uh, that usability enhancement enhancement isn't consistent with our design standards. And these are usually people uh, who are management who don't know anything about design are making all the shots. So uh, Barto says there are some that go, oh, can we add an extra page where we just throw my entire old website in? <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Huh. So, yeah. Um, this is uh, this is why traditional safe layouts, you know, it doesn't really help push the bar in web design. But web design is always growing. And we can't let it just stop. And we always need to create something unique to see how far we can go. Um, so let's talk about creating something unique. Oh, wait, Vincent said something. Let's see. I had a client who always wanted and still wants the same homepage uh, than MailChimp. Good for me. They change it every month or so. Really good business. So they want to change it just like MailChimp? Hmm. So creating something unique. The pros for it. Great for that initial wow moment. Um, you know, when someone comes to a website you want you want the user to be like wow this is different they're really pushing the limits of design and i feel i feel like oh this is a new place um the company and the company's brand can be seen as something unique and stands out from the from the crowd uh here's an example great example uh you walk into a store, you, say you walk into, um, you know, you walk into Best Buy or you walk into Walmart or, or something, right? You walk in and it's just products. And you're like, okay, I'm looking for X. I got to go to the store because I got to buy something. Okay, cool. And you're browsing around, you go. So, okay, and you exit the store, you leave with your products and you're done. And you're just like, okay, that's fine. But what was that initial wow moment you got? when you first walked into the Apple store, when it first opened up in your area, you know, everything's super clean. It's, it's different because it's just, um, wood tables and the products are spaced out really nicely. What was that initial wow moment? And so you go in and it's still a store that you buy products at, but then it made the brand feel different because you're walking into something more clean. And it's the same thing for websites. Do you want people to just walk in like, okay, I'm just here for information. Or do you want to give them an experience where they walk in and they're like, oh, okay, I want to stay here a little longer. It feels different, you know? And so um, when you create something unique, designers may create the next, you as a designer may create something like a new trend. You may be the creator of a, another trend. You know, and, and it takes a long time to get there, but why not try? And lastly, for the pro, um, and th again, this is most important, and I always say this, tell a story first. Working You'll get to work collaboratively with a content strategist to help give direction to the website's design. See, websites do not start on the wireframe stage. It starts with words. As a designer, if you're given the budget and time to work with a content strategist, go for it. Tell your clients how important it is to work with a content strategist because those words dictate the design, which makes something super unique. Okay. Uh, lots of great talk in the chat room. Um, Luke, as designers, we have to remember we work for the client. I have a client that always wants his business contact number as big as possible, regardless of the site and my recommendations. Um, so this is where 
this is where uh, asking why. Um, I think I've heard this uh, from someone I talked to at the con conference. Ask why seven times. You know, <laughs> be that annoying kid. Why? 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 Why does the number have to be as as big as the other? Uh, will it generate more ROI? Can we do A/B testing? Can uh, um, are you not getting enough calls? Why are you not getting enough calls? You know, so ask why. What is the root cause of that? I want to make the contact number as big as I can. You know, there has to be a reason, and. If that person has a legitimate reason, then make that phone number 200 pixels tall, <laughs> and hopefully they get the ROI they they need. Anna, uh, if a client doesn't want to spend too much money on a website, they can at least spend a little more to have a unique homepage and use a template for inside pages. First impression shouldn't be boring. That's a good. That's a good middle ground. I haven't thought of that. Um, yeah. Usually home pages, you know, though those are. The that's the front door. Do you want someone to walk in the front door, try to lead them in with something unique, and then all the child pages could be, um, could be basic. Yeah, because they're at that point they're probably just looking for information anyways and don't need to be wowed as much. Um, Eric says, in my situation, I can't choose clients. I need everyone for my portfolio. Eric. Um. Not necessarily. In, in my opinion, you don't need to take every single client that knocks on your door. Because if that client is someone you feel like, hmm, my, I'm probably not going to make something really good after I'm done with this project and I don't want to put it in my portfolio, then it's it would probably not worth the worth the time because that type of client who just wants something fast turnaround and doesn't care about design they they genuinely don't they generally don't uh pay as much right you want to go for those higher paying clients because you're passionate about design so find those that are that are as passionate about pushing their brand and using your design skills to make their brand better because that's what they're hiring you for if they aren't hiring you for design skills then they're probably just hiring you to do production work which means you're just a robot right don't be a robot be human uh to define goals uh vincent says tell them six months after production you'll check if the goals have been reached without goals you can just use the template ah yes define goals um see here Dennis love the biggest pain in the in the butt are the low paying clients they have too small budget and too many recommendations the higher paying ones are more creative freedom or more are giving more creative freedom at least this is what I have expected or X Eric how how long have you been um, in the web design game and what are you trying um what are you doing to get your name out there? I did a workshop a couple weeks ago about five things I should have known before I started freelancing. Try looking for that video and it may have some good tips for you uh, to find new clients. All right, back on target on my notes. Um, now the cons for creating something unique and I think we've already uh, uh, talked about this in the chat room, but Longer turnaround time due to research and UX testing. So when you're working with a content strategist, uh, you have to write a whole story out for the website so you know what type of content goes where. But also you're researching what type of UX, unique type of UX you can do with the website to make it stand out. Um, also, just like that one I showed you, the We Are Soap, I think. What is it? Uh, yeah, We Are Soak. The UX may get confusing because it's not traditional. Uh, in the We Are Soak, here, let me bring it back up again so you know what I'm talking about. Right here, you know, 
if I didn't know better, I wouldn't know if I should scroll down or not. You know, that this is trying to push push web design uh, trends forward, but sometimes it gets confusing. And then the menu button at the top left, I don't know it's a menu button because it doesn't say menu. If I hover over it, there is no word that says menu. Yeah, there's nothing that indicates that this is a menu. And these dots, if I didn't roll over them, I wouldn't have known that they actually scroll down to the certain pages. But it's unique. Uh, let me get one more that's unique. So this one has a loader. This is cuberto.com. And this one, it's telling you to scroll with this icon at the bottom. And so I'm scrolling. And when I scroll down, I'm thinking I'm going to scroll down the page. But no, it actually makes animations. It triggers an animation to happen. So while really cool, you know, it's kind of, it's like, oh, okay. It kind of scared me because I didn't know that it's not going to scroll down. So is this pushing design trends and UX further? Oh, Eric, thank you for joining us. Hopefully that, um, hopefully you can watch those videos in the past uh, workshops. Good luck with uh, your freelancing. All right. So yeah. And we're back to the beginning. So it's different. I like it. But will it hold up? You know, it's all about time, uh, testing it with time, you know, it's hopefully it works so we can move forward and do stuff like this. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. And lastly, uh, new and flashy like this may turn away some users, you know, some people who like traditional, um, Templated type of sites, they'll probably see this and be like, ooh, that's too fancy. I don't want it, you know? And, you know, it, it could be a it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Uh, also, with stuff like this, where it's super unique, code coding skills are definitely needed. Definitely needed. Okay. And and you can't do any scrolling interactions uh, on Webflow yet where it it does this type of stuff. All right. So let's see here. Kojo thinks that the Cuberto, I think it works and I like it a lot. I think it works too, but it, you know, I would love to see their analytics. Are people actually clicking on the things they want people to click on? Is it bringing in more customers? Are they getting more calls? Uh, yeah, like what's the initial reactions for people who go there to that website? So I want to know because if it pushes web design forward, then yes. Uh, code. Kojo also says it features some cool trends. Background videos are a big thing now. Yes, they are. Shadow Palm, what's your opinion on horizontal scrolling design? Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't work. Uh, when it's when the whole page is scrolling, it's it's not like Huberto where it introduces a new full page. It's just scrolling left to right. And you know who did that? MySpace. <laughs> MySpace did that horizontal scrolling when uh, Justin Timberlake bought it out, and or at least bought some shares of it or something. And it just felt weird. I was like, why the scrolling left and right? It it just doesn't feel right because I'm scrolling down with my mouse, but it's going left to right. So in my opinion, that design trend never went forward. And I'm kind of happy it doesn't because if I want to scroll left and right, I'm going to use my, if you have a left and right scrolling wheel, then I'm going to use that. You know, actually I use that for a uh, tweet deck, you know, uh, Ron says, okay, uh, Medio, 
If you need a B2C site, business to consumer site, it's probably best to go for a simple and clean and easy to navigate website that most users will be used to. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, Target, target.com. It's super clean. Let's go and look for, so look at how clean this is. Super clean. The search is right there in the center. You know, if I'm looking for something, it's right there in the center and super clean. I mean, I feel like this is more better than Amazon because it's so clean. You know, of course, I'm going to click on the Millennium Falcon. Clean, thin lines, the information is there. Yeah, okay, so V to C, yeah. But, uh, a lot of different types of UX was used for this. For example, you don't see the logo anymore when, I, when you scroll down, you know? But you still know you're at Target, so it's okay. And then the big photo gallery, really nice. All right. Um, Ron says, oh, hello from Jamaica. Yay. Thanks for these workshops. No problem. Uh, I gain more confidence in using Webflow in my workflow. Ah, I see what you did there. Keep them coming, Nelson. No problem. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is a great topic. I love the discussion in the live chat. Let's keep it going. Anna says, what gives you inspiration for creative design? Uh, you know, um, I think I've talked about this uh, before, but yeah, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, oh yeah, I said it in the five things I should have known before freelancing. Uh, it's in that video, but I'll say it again. Um, movies, TV shows, uh, other websites, obviously, package design. Uh, do I still have it? Here, let me get this again. I'll give this example again. <laughs> so this is the box that I kept for my um, gaming headsets. Uh, there. Okay. So you can think about this. This is package design. So I really love this package because it's super unique. It's different. It gives a story before I even get to the product. So this is... Um, this is like the home page, like the hero row. A lot of great artwork here. And then if I say, pretend I'm scrolling down, I have more information on the product. And then if I scroll down even more or open it, I get this guy right here. It's like a, a glossy, glossy artwork. And then if I scroll down more or interact with it more, I get, I get to open it this way, and then I get to open it this way, and then the headphones would be on this side right here, and the accessories would be here. I mean, the amp would be there. And plus, it goes even further, because then I have more accessories over here. So this type of interaction this type of storytelling it's hey this is your product we're getting closer to it we're getting closer and closer and closer to it and finally here it is and so i i like that about package design um let's see here riley says i think side scrolling can be tasteful i've seen it done well can you give us a link of a tasteful side scroller i would love to see it uh, it's clean uh, as F. It is a design error not seeing the logo while scrolling. Is it? Is it a design error not seeing the logo while scrolling down? Oh, so we're talking about Target again. I don't think it's a, as a design error because they want you to focus on buying the product. At that point, when you're scrolling down, they want you to read about the product rather than telling rather than reminding you hey you're buying it from target the if i'm here what's the thing that comes out most this button add to cart that is the most 
thing that's the the ui element that's coming out at my face at all times reminding me hey add it to the cart i don't have to be reminded that i'm at target if i want this i'm gonna click add to cart um it is one of the principles that works awesome for web design remove as much as possible until there will only left something that's necessary yes removing more than you need is how to make something super simple and i think this is what many designers and um especially apple you know removing as much as possible because making something simple is the hardest thing to do but when you do it it la it's it lasts a long time and that also goes for logo design you know um the best logos are the ones that you can't change anymore because it's so simple that anyone would know what it is at first glance okay oh bye bartosh have a great anniversary dinner um Shadow Palm typographic posters.com. That's one of my favorite site design. Let's take a look. Oops. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's a lot happening. And what is. I'm guessing that's their logo. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, hiding inside, hiding in sand. That's pretty cool. And this one scrolls left and right, I'm guessing. Yeah, it does. Because I can't scroll up and down. So I can't scroll up and down, but there's this, there's this guy right here. The cursor is up and down, left and right. So if it's up and down, left and right, that's incorrect because I'm thinking I can go up and down left and right but I can't go up and down I can only go left and right so it needs a different mouse cursor to indicate left and right or maybe the hand that grabs on and drags so but I understand what they're trying to do that's interesting two sets of shares three sets of shares I don't know about that one. Or no, it's two. Okay. Eh, I don't know. And then we have shares again at the top right. Not sure. But I, I get what they're doing. Hmm. That's interesting. I like it, but at the same time... Uh, it, it, I don't know. Will, will it stand the test of time? Scrolling left and right? We'll see. Um, yeah, so final thoughts for traditional versus, um, unique and final thoughts on this topic. Um, when I think of traditional sites versus unique, I think of fast food versus like Michelin star rated restaurants, you know, uh, fast food, you, you get there, I want a burger fries and a drink done and it's made within minutes and you're satisfied but it's not one you'd be like wow this is amazing i'm gonna tell all my friends about it this is the greatest thing in the world you know you're just there you get what you need and you're done whereas something that's prepared for hours and you're brought to a very grand experience you sit down you eat it you want to take pictures of it you want to tell all your friends about it you want to recommend it to your friends you want to go back with your friends and just see their eyes light up when they take that first bite of that awesome plate that you've told them so much about and then they want to tell their friends and so forth that's the experience that i think as us designers should be striving for now i know we can't get that with every client but always look for those type of clients because they're out there they want something high class 
Um, and yeah, websites aren't boring. It's just that we need to keep striving for those for those creative clients. And when you get a creative client, don't go straight into design. The most important part to any website is its content. Find a content strategist. Explain exactly to your client why content strategy is needed at the beginning. Because content dictates design. If you're just going at it with just design, it the design won't last long. Because there needs to be a point. There needs to be a reason for each pixel, each function, each interaction that happens on the page. If there's no reason for it, then it won't stand the test of time. Okay? Uh, so, web design isn't dead because we just haven't found the right tools yet to collaborate with content designers. I mean, content strategists. Okay? So, Here's another example. When I talk about real-time stuff, of uh, real-time tools, I'm talking about you have a paintbrush, you dip it in color, and you put it on the canvas. That's real-time. You're seeing your results in real-time when you paint it on the canvas. When you're designing in a browser, you know, you're not coding it, you're designing in the browser, it's real-time. It's not, let me code it, then refresh the page, and hopefully it works. That's not real-time. So with Webflow, we now have real-time uh, real tools to make websites look awesome. Now with this tool, work with a content strategist so they can see their work shown on the page right away, rather than you two trying to guess and wait for the coding to happen. Okay, Nita says, uh, I do that a lot too. I'm more visual and sometimes they don't have all the content from the client. Shadow Palm, con clients barely have their content in, pla in place in my experience. Nita, Shadow Palm, great comment. Um, if a client doesn't have the content ready, stress to them how important it is to subcontract a content strategist so they can help them get the content they need because content strategists look for good SEO keywords but at the same time they're making the brand stand out with good words and I can't stress this enough words is what makes a website happen okay um, so if a, a client is just saying hey here's a word doc and we don't have some of the stuff done, but we'll give it to you later, that's a red flag. That means that the site is gonna fall flat because you're just putting FPO or for placement only content or lorem ipsum on different uh, sections of the site. You can't tell how long the content's gonna be, how short it's gonna be, you can't tell because you're just guessing. When you have all the Lego pieces in front of you, it's easier to build rather than trying to build a whole Millennium Falcon, next thing you know, you're missing a lot of the parts and you have to guess which parts fits where later on. Uh, Shadow Palm, it's the first thing I ask for and they give me very little to work with. Usually I write it. If you're writing the copy, I suggest hire, if, if you're good with a content strategy, go for it. Um, make them pay you more if you're writing the copy for them, okay? Uh, if you're not a good copywriter, and I'm not I'm not a good copywriter, it's, it's tough. Words are so tough for me. But that's when you hire a content strategist to help you out, and you work collaboratively to make the site happen. Madeline, yes, I've seen that quote before. Design without content is just decoration. I will say that again. Thank you, Madeline. Design without content is just decoration. Um, Need is asking, does it happen to anyone, the client asking you to write content for them? 
yes, I think it happens to everyone. Uh, hey, we we don't have all the content. Can you just write it up for us? And again, that's when I stress, hire a content strategist to help you out. John, from now on, I won't start a site without the client having all the content ready to go. Yes, John. Yes, that's exactly the way to go. Websites don't start on the on wireframes. They start with words. I'm good with shadow palm. I'm good with words. I'm okay, but help always welcome. Let's go here. <laughs> what is this, Riley? What is this? Some cool examples and different approaches. All right, let's take a look. Also, this is the last part of the stream. So if you are doing something in Webflow, show it. Show it to the community. Let's see what you're working on. Ooh. Perfumes. Let's see here. Scroll to discover. So I'm scrolling down and it's going left and right. Okay. That's interesting. So what this makes me feel like is I'm at a Nordstrom's or department store or whatnot, and this is the perfume aisle. And perfume aisles don't go top to bottom. They go left to right because they're in shelves. They're on shelves. And I feel like I'm passing by a shelf right now. And so I'm liking it. So I'm scrolling down fast. So here's the thing. I'm scrolling down fast, and I only get one scroll per. So I scroll down, like, scroll down really fast, nothing happened. So I'm scrolling up. Hey, it's not scrolling up. Oop, that's bad. I'm scrolling up. I want to go back. Hmm, they need to fix that. The only way to go back is hitting these dots. So if I scroll up, I'm going to scroll up. Now it works. Scroll down. Okay, it's when you get to the last bar, you can't scroll back up. It's okay, I'm gonna scroll down, scroll down, scroll up. Now it works. Hmm, okay. Websites are weird like that. Okay, that's cool. All right, so this is, this is unique. That's interesting. Okay, let's see what a child page looks like. What? Spicy Rose. And this one scrolls down. Okay, this is scrolling way too slow. But I understand they're trying to tell the story. I'm kind of left um, like this with this one. I like it, but I don't like it. Because it takes so long to scroll down. But then again, will people like this in, say, a couple of months? Like, I'm scrolling really fast right now. And it's scrolling really slow. Like, what if I just want to buy it? I have to go all the way down to the bottom, and it takes a long time to go to the bottom. Okay. All right, looks cool. Let's see here. Okay, da, da, da. Usually designer and copy work as a team. Alexandra, that is correct. That is the, the main focus I'm trying to say for this week's topic. Designers and copywriters need to work as a team. Unless you have both sides. I've only met one person who's an English major and loves design. Unless you have that type of mindset, uh, it's okay to work with a copywriter or a content strategist because both of you will produce something awesome. I feel I always charge a fee if the client doesn't send me content on time. Yes, do that. Exactly. Um, your clients are also on a timeline because if you're on a timeline, they're on a timeline too. And if they don't produce, uh, they don't give you the content on time. That's their fault. 
So pressure them. It's okay to. Because they would pressure you too if you don't get the project done on time. All right, let's look at your Webflow sites, guys. All right, here we go. Nate, still not done, but loving Webflow so far. We love you too. UX and eight. I don't design websites. I design experiences. Become oriented in your market and set your business apart. Nice. All right. So like we talked about, can this be different? You know, I know this is great so far. I'm loving it. But how can we make this go further? Hmm. I got to think about it. I can't really, I don't see how to make it different because it, it works. I know where to press the button. I know I have to scroll down. So if I click this, ooh. Not sure why you would do that, where you would miss the whole part of the, the, the whole point of the website. Get started and it goes all the way to the bottom. Maybe get started just scrolls you down to here. Scrolling down, really nice. Nice and clean. Dude, it's a great start. I love it. I love the... um. The gradient here, beautiful. Let's see. Okay, hover states at the top would be nice. And your. I would set the anchor to go here rather than here. Because, see, if I click on about, there's uncomfortable space in between everything and the top of the browser. But yeah, I love the negative space around, the, the white space around everything. Okay. Um, also, okay, I know how to make this um, be unique. I don't design websites. I design experiences. Who is I? I don't know who I is until I get down to here and see your photo. Get a good headshot. Have a photographer give you a good headshot and then put it here in the home page and the hero row. You are the one who designs uh, website um, experiences. Okay? But great job so far. Keep it up. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, Star Assurance LTD. All right. Ooh, okay. It's different. Whoa. View. Okay. I would make this slower. Because when it comes to insurance, it's all about safety. It's all about, hey, we got your back. Um, I would do a regular f a crossfade or a slow slide and without that bouncy effect because then again i'll ask why this fast why the bouncy what's what's the point of it okay whoa okay that's a long list okay uh hidden drop down menus if you have a drop down menu Indicate that before a user uh, interacts with it. How to do that? Simply by adding a, a down arrow right next to the word products. Because products is the only one with a drop down menu. Because I hover over products and there's a huge list, in my mind I'm already thinking, okay, then there's long lists for all these other ones. But notice that there's not. So since products is different than the rest you need to tell the user before the user interacts with it hey there's information here also this is a long list you may want to break that up uh maybe three columns you know uh but even more how would you break that up even more to make it wait 
we have products again here and insurance and then products and insurance here and then about wondering why you have two nav bars hmm okay let's look at one of these things okay nice and clean watch out for your spacing right here um, there's not enough space in between the paragraph and the copy and let's just go to board directors nothing here okay okay so it's a work in progress all right and are you allowed to use the word MacBook in your copy or, I mean in your images careful with those things it's you know legalities and whatnot uh, but yeah all right moving on great job Kojo keep it up um, show us what you got in the next in the next week's uh, workshop slay that's Beyonce's word <laughs> all right Okay, careful, you have a horizontal scroll happening for some reason. But let's refresh that. Let me let me take it in again. Okay. Now how can we make this different? It's great. It works so far. You know, I know where I'm at. I know how to get around the pages. The copy says what I what I expected it's something that tells me what you guys do and then a call to action button how can we make it different maybe play around with the shape of the letter Y it seems that you guys like to play with the letter Y so maybe some sort of uh, maybe some masking or, or whatnot some sort of shape to say you had like a triangle how do i explain this let me go to webflow.com templates i know Jaden does some great designs there we go is it different studios i think so it's this one okay check this out so this is very different from a lot of our templates we have in the Webflow, in the Webflow uh, marketplace. But check this out: something like this, you know, where you might have your content here on the right, but that background video playing on the left, or vice versa. You can still do something like this, but make it a little bit different, you know. So do it maybe something like this. So, you know try to make it unique okay let's get started all right that background's unique i like that okay nothing clickable here but it's okay using 3d transforms i love it need more people to use that digital tools okay okay these are tabs nice good job all right good start good start love it keep it up oh that was nita yeah keep it up moving on uh let's see no lag what no we're gonna keep going okay brandon what you got very thin lines okay we're going with something super thin okay okay let me take this in hmm alright so you're trying something for a lot of space breathy a uh, spiritual therapist so you're trying to take away stress that's what I that's what I see that's what I see um, the space in the middle I know you want to keep that open but there could be a different way to do that because I feel like everything is squished to the top and bottom like everyone get away from the clouds like let's 
push everything away. Uh, hmm. How do you do that? I for here, I wouldn't focus too much on the openness of nature. Because does she work in nature? Um, is does she take the the clients out to a hike? I would focus on who this person is. If I'm going to, if I'm going to trust my my mental health with someone, I want to know who that someone is. Right now, I only know the person's name and occupation. I want to know who this person is by looking at them. Is this person, does this person have a face I can be happy to interact with on a weekly or daily basis to help me get on a more mental, uh, uh, a better mental state? You know? So I would change the background completely and put the person's name. And again, like different studios right here. Do something different. Okay, so um, that's not the therapist, obviously. This We're back on um, Jaden's template. Um, but, you know, do something different that shows someone. And then, so maybe like the picture of the therapist. And then on the right side, the picture of the mountains. Something like that. Something, something different. Okay? Because, again, I want to know who am I about to make an appointment with. Also, the text here is getting way too close to this guy. Okay. All right, moving down. See how much space there is here? That's beautiful. I love that. Compared to the hero, it seems squished to the top and bottom. Oh, if you want the link for different studios, here you go. That's our boy Jaden. Really good designer. So you have a lot of space here. This is good. This is good. Okay, now you have one, two, three paragraphs, three sections. And I haven't seen a picture of who I might be setting an appointment with. Now it just gets a little bit boring because there's no no visuals it's just text okay and I get to the bottom there is no photo of her so that's I think that's the most important where's the photo I'm hoping it's here there it is so again bring this to the home page somehow hire a photographer to do some shots um, do some headshots uh, or her hiking or, or something, or her at work, you know, um, I can see a picture of her at work writing down notes or something, but you don't see the client or something, uh, her in her office or, um, you know what I mean? Show who she is on the homepage. And yeah. All right, good start. Let's see here, anyone else? Who was that again? Brandon, yeah, Brandon, great job so far. Okay, all right, let's take one last one. Here we go. Deb says, I'm using a template, I'm really new here. Start for a site. There's a lot of templates that haven't been covered. The designer Pablo R has been really helpful. We have a year until event. Okay. Uh, no problem, Brandon. Fusa.io. Oh, Vlad. <laughs> Hello. Yes, let's take a look at your site. What does Fusa mean? What is Fusa? Fusa. Fusa? All right. Specializing in the UX, UI, UI, UX, designing and building of websites for startups and small businesses. Okay. It's, this is very straightforward. Okay. I totally understand that. But this is, again, this is where content strategy may help. 
But since this, this is a portfolio site, you may not need it. But, um, you know, this is very straightforward. But, again, what is your story? Why do you like UI UX? What made you, what made you do it? What made you stay in this UI UX uh, industry? Why? 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 Tell us why. In the shortest amount of words possible. That's the hard part. All right. Moving down. Beautiful. I like what you're doing with the type in the background. Um, the hover. I have a left and right arrow. Is that telling me I can move left and right? Why did you use this cursor? I'm going to be asking a lot of whys. If I click on it, it goes to it. Okay, so if I click on it, it goes to it. So shouldn't that be a right arrow or should you just stick with the um, mouse cursor like this? On Apple, it's only right. Ah, okay, I'm using a PC. So maybe that's why. So just to make sure that PCs and Apple see the same thing, I would stick with the regular mouse cursor. Okay, scrolling down, beautiful so far. Okay, there's nothing else. Okay, so it's a work in progress, I'm guessing. Dude, I love the type design. In the, dude, that's cool. I love that. Okay, so it's static, doesn't move. Nice. Uh, this text right here, interested. It seems like it's Times New Roman. You might want to fix that. Get a website. Um, this should be a button. In my opinion but yeah like it great job all right guys um yeah let's summarize today traditional versus unique fast food versus Michelin starred restaurants you know there's a place for each but always strive to make something unique. The web is not dead. Uh, web design is not dead. Web design is not boring. It's just that we need to continually push the boundaries of design. Even if someone makes fun of your design and say, oh my God, that'll never work. Still keep that in your back pocket because you'll never know if that design trend comes along or you've started something new. Always make something crazy. Okay, and then pull back when you need to. And the most important thing I hope you guys get out of this is work with a content strategist. They will help you make the most beautiful sites. Okay, all right, last one from Mindwire because it's about Pokemon Go. All made in Webflow, great job. Let me turn up the sound on this. Oh, no music on this no more? You took it out? Oh, okay. All right. So let's see here. Again, uh, MindWire has done this uh, without code. This is all interactions in Webflow. So let's go here. Oh, it works. That's so cool. Nice. What? There's three steps? They removed that. This is old. <laughs> Great job, Mindwire. Alright. Alright. Thank you guys so much for dealing with the technical difficulties. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, let's go through the proper sign-offs, shall we? If you have any account billing or technical issues, please email me at support at webflow.com. If you have any design issues, the very helpful community will help you out 24-7 over at forums.webflow.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Webflow app, or if you want to follow me, it's either at the Pixel Geek or at Webflow underscore Nelson. Follow us on Twitter, it's er, Facebook, facebook.com slash Webflow. And I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next week. Uh, 
yeah, um, it might be a special special broadcast. Uh, I'll tease it a little in the forums. But yeah, I will see you guys next week, 10 a.m. Tuesday Pacific, uh, Pacific Time. And as always, make the web beautiful. Thanks.